Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Edens, a finance coach, author, and wealth mindset researcher, and I'm so happy you chose to join me today. With Halloween coming up this week, we are going to do a fun two-part series on spooky financial mistakes. And let me know in the comments which one of those, if any, you have actually made yourself. I know I've made a fair amount of these on the list over the years, and I'm happy to share my stories today. And it's just really interesting because financial mistakes can totally haunt us for many, many years. It's really unfortunate, but for some reason, it just ends up being that way where, especially if you're take, making a financial mistake, where you end up taking a lot of debt on, that can really, really start to add up and affect you for many, many years. So it's easier if we don't make these mistakes in the first place. And if you've never made these mistakes, congratulations, learn from mine for sure. And learn from our community. Let's all continue to comment and help grow this channel of like-minded people who are here to learn about personal finance, learn about wealth mindset, and unlock our inner millionaires together. Okay, so let's get right into five scary money mistakes that you may or may not have made. So number one is not having an emergency fund. And I know this was true for me for uh, several years in my early 20s. And it was mostly just because I wasn't making very much money and no one is when they're first out of college or in their first couple of jobs. And so having an emergency fund can be very difficult initially when you're just getting started. So if you don't have an emergency fund and you're in your early 20s, don't worry about it. But it's something that you can begin to build now so that you've got it. Because as time goes on and you're making more money, then you can continue to add to that emergency fund and just have that safe safety net and peace of mind because goodness me, the world is absolutely crazy right now. We have seen so much upheaval, so much unprecedented things like the pandemic and just things that really impact the economy in an outsized way, almost in the blink of an eye. So there's never been a better time to start building an emergency fund if you don't have one already. Number two is living beyond your means. So this is definitely also something that I was doing for years before I realized that I was doing it and needed to stop. So what I mean by this is that you are either outspending what you're making and running up a lot of consistent credit card debt or you're just having a lifestyle that you just can't afford on your current salary. And so my advice to you on this is if you have a lifestyle that you really, really want to lead, that really makes you happy and really make, brings you joy, just get creative about how to bring in more money because that's honestly the best way to support that lifestyle is kind of figure out, you know, a lot of times, especially with inflation right now, we're all feeling this, myself included. We are all feeling this right now where our money's not going as far as it used to. And so, and, and then everything's costing more. And so it's just, it gets a little bit stressful. So I think bringing in more money, having additional income streams is the best fix for this. If you're really challenged with living beyond your means, but not wanting to kind of make those cuts, is just figure out how to make more money. I have a couple of videos on that that I'll link to in the description as well that can help you kind of brainstorm other ideas for how to bring in additional income Income. And then if you really are living beyond your means, but maybe you're doing it just to kind of impress other people or because you feel pressured to live a certain way, but it's not bringing you joy, then maybe consider areas that you can start scaling back and really look at which areas you can spend on that will bring you joy and which ones you're spending on that really you don't care about that much and be able to just kind of make that differentiation for yourself of are you living the lifestyle you want to live because you want to live that way or are you living a lifestyle because you feel like there's peer pressure or other pressure to live a certain lifestyle that doesn't make you very happy. So just some things to think about. Number three is not budgeting. So this is something that is very, very common. I have a whole playlist that I'm building here on YouTube that I'll link to in the description if you're unfamiliar with budgeting. But basically budgeting is just knowing how much money you have coming in, how much money you have coming going back out, making sure you've got money slotted for savings, making sure that you're investing if you're into investing, and just having all of your money really well organized. Because if you don't have a 
a budget and your money's just doing all kinds of stuff and you're like, I have no idea how much I'm making. I don't know where it all goes. Um, that can cause a lot of personal stress. It can cause a lot of relationship stress if you're managing money with your spouse or partner. So it can really cause a lot of problems. So that can be something that gets very scary very quickly, especially if you don't have a budget and then you go to make a major purchase, and I have absolutely done this before, where you just go and you're like, okay, like the monthly payments don't sound so bad on this, so I guess we can afford it. And then it just starts to suck money out of your budget with all those monthly payments on all those different things, whether it's car loans, or I know we bought a trailer one year that ended up just being a money pit. That was my probably my biggest one that springs to mind with this. If I'd had a budget at that point, I'm sure I would have looked at it and said, you know, I don't know if doing these uh, monthly payments on this trailer makes it worth it to buy one. And so we had, a, we had a certain specific circumstance that we bought it for, and I won't go into that right now. But looking back on it, I'm like, you know what? That's the kind of thing with those recreational vehicles. And you hear people talk about this all the time with things like RVs, boats, motorcycles, things like that, where they're just such a money pit at the end of the day, unless it really fits into your lifestyle in a certain way. But yeah, just thinking through how budgeting can keep us from making scary money mistakes is another good one. Number four is ignoring high interest debt. So that's something where if you are constantly running credit card balances and your credit card annual percentage rate is say 22%, which is the average right now for credit cards as I'm filming this in October of 23. And so if you are running a lot of very expensive credit card debt and that's starting to really rack up with um, all of those fees and all of that interest on those cards that you're keeping around, that can be something that really starts cutting into your bottom line. So that's something that, first of all, using credit really takes skill and it's a learned skill that I have a playlist on about credit use that I'll link to. And that is something that is very important to use credit wisely or it can just cause a huge snowball effect of debt. And then if it's high interest rate, it can become almost impossible to pay off. So really important to think through before you open a new credit card or start putting a lot of things on a high interest credit card, how much money that's going to cost you in interest. And then fifth is not starting to invest early enough. This is definitely something that I can relate to, and I don't know about you, but I can definitely relate to this. So investing early on lets you take advantage of something called compound interest, so that the longer you have your money in those investment vehicles, whether it's stocks, whether it's in bonds, um, even you think about investing in real estate and appreciation on your real estate that you own, but the earlier you get started, the better, because inflation is especially Actually lately has just kept going up and they've gotten it down somewhat since its peak earlier last year. But with generally speaking, inflation does continue to um, drive the price of everything up. And so as you're invested and as you're getting taking advantage of that compound interest, you just get to benefit from having your money in those investment vehicles over time. And the earlier you start and the longer you have your money in those investments, basically the more your net worth is over time. And so the sooner you can start educating yourself about investing in whatever investment vehicle you're interested in, but any it, the sooner the better when it comes to investing. And it's really all about investing smart, investing wisely, and just it's something that there's a lot of resources for on YouTube these days that you can learn from very successful investors who are sharing all their secrets and what they invest in because there's so many different things to invest in, not just the stock market. So that's something that I wish I'd started earlier with investments for sure but it's never too late. So definitely educate yourself, inform yourself, and then start small as you're investing. If you're just getting into the stock market, for example, start really small. I always recommend that people just start by buying ETFs. They're called exchange traded funds. And that's a really good place to start because a lot of times people try to put their own portfolios together of picking stocks and not sure how to do it. And that can actually lose you money if you don't know what you're doing. So ETFs are a great place to start if you've never purchased a stock before. And definitely there are lots of investment advisors out there that you can also hire and they will manage your portfolio for you. They will help guide you on how to manage it if you don't want to have them be quite so hands-on. But there are many professionals out there who know so much about investing and will be able to assist you there. So if it's something that you haven't started because 
you just simply aren't familiar with it, then either you can educate yourself on it or you can hire someone to do it for you, whichever is your preference. All right, so that's five spooky money mistakes that people commonly make that can leave you with haunting consequences for years to come. And in the next video, we will get into five more of those spooky mistakes. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing, and I will see you again soon in my next video.